Hey everyone, this video is about to be some tea. So I'm here to talk to y'all about my non-traditional journey to medicine. And if y'all already know me, y'all know I love to tell the truth. I will, sh I, you already see from the um, thumbnail that I'm gonna be talking about my scores. I want people to feel motivated that even if their application is weak today, they can definitely improve their application to be co a competitive applicant for medical school. Okay, if this is your first time watching any of my videos, welcome. My channel is for anyone who's thinking about or currently training in medicine. I give advice based on my own life experiences. So, all right, let's get started about my journey. So, some of you might or may not know, but I was an anthropology major in undergrad and if we were to really go all the way back i was a biochem major when i first started i went to a science high school in brooklyn loved that high school um and i thought i wanted to be a biochemist i remember being an, i was an environmental science major in that high school and i took a course and i read some article that made me feel like i wanted to be a biochemist <sighs> i played myself I did that major and I was like, what am I supposed to do with all this science? Like it was just not enjoyable to me at all. And the, for you, those of you in undergrad, you know, a lot of colleges make these science courses, like these weed out courses. So they're just so hard. You don't really know how they're relevant to life. It really, and I was just like, I'm not interested in this. And my scores definitely struggled most specifically in sophomore year. I will say I did struggle a bit with, um, balancing play and study i will admit that um i also did not have friends that were really um in science majors so i think that they were able to handle their courses better than i was um so my 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 great struggles and i decided to change my major closer to the end of sophomore year well because you guys saw what that gpa was looking like <laughs> and uh, i thought about a few majors including nursing public health and i and I ended up going with anthropology and I love anthropology as a major. And it really was anthropology where we were learning the history of humans and how medicine plays into communities. Um, even today, I was just so intrigued and I was like, I want to be a doctor. It was literally anthropology that made me so intrigued. We talked a lot about health disparities and health um, in, in my major. And I was thinking about medicine or like public health and I was figuring out how I can combine those and the thing though is that I don't have anybody in my life who is a physician so I heard from so many people like being a physician you have to do so many years of training like you should think about another field so I was trying to figure out what else should I do I have an uncle who's has is an engineer and a lot of his friends are doctors so he was the one who was like you should be a doctor um but I was still super hesitant about it I was also doing research at the time and my the person who I was doing the research project with he also said you should be a doctor so I was thinking about that but by the time I graduated undergrad I did not know what I wanted to do with my life I was really confused I had taken the MCAT to just like see how things went and this was the score that I got and I was just like what am I gonna do like look at my um MCAT score it's just so low like what should I be doing and uh, um the what I had at the time mind you um in regards to just experience and um leadership I was not in any medical leadership program so I really didn't have great guidance you at least should be in a pre-med organization to help you with um help you get guidance you should also have a great relationship with your um pre-med advisor um I was part activity wise I was part of the student conduct board in my at my school where when students get in trouble like we're part of a board that may help determine their punishment or if you, even if they should be punished I was part of the big brother big sister program as well and just a few other um, extracurricular activities I had I was part of two research project projects that were based one was basic science and one was working with the community I did not really enjoy the basic science project but it was with that faculty that um, he told me to be a doctor. And so I'm super grateful for him forever. And the other project was working with the community. And that's and that was while I was doing my anthropology major. And I was like, I really want to work with people. Like, I love working with community. And I love, like, talking to them about their health and counseling about them with their health. Because that's what I was doing in that um, research project. 
And I was just like, this is what I want to do. Um, I grad so like I said, I graduated really with and um another thing that I also had was that I was I worked I worked all the time while I was an undergrad. So I worked at Victoria's Secret for multiple years and then I, after I left that job, I was working as um it's not really a teacher, but it was like an after school the term is called was it called a group leader but it's almost like an after school teacher like I did that at, um, in my free time and in the summertime I worked in their summer camp and I helped devise their health awareness courses and their math and science courses so I did have like really fun experiences that I was able to talk about on my eventual med school interviews but the science GPA was not great the MCAT was I didn't even, I had never shadowed a doctor um, yet. I had shadowed a, a pharmacist because y'all, I was all over the place. I was thinking about being a pharmacist. I shadowed a pharmacist and I was like, maybe that's not for me. And even the pharmacist told me to be a doctor. So, so, that, so I graduated and I was like, here I am, what am I gonna do? So I applied to medical school the year that I graduated from undergrad and before the year I started my master's program and I did not get in and upon reflection I was not prepared to apply to medical school at that time and even though at that time I thought my MCAT score was terrible it was not as terrible as I soon realized it could have been and additionally my application was not ready for me to apply to medical school and I found out the hard way by not getting in and my next steps were to figure out how to become a competitive applicant. Luckily I was able to work in a mortgage company super random but I had I loved my coworkers at my mortgage company it was awesome and I worked part-time as an ER scribe and I really did that just for that experience. I did not enjoy that. What that experience taught me was other than exposure to the medical field, it taught me that I really did not want to work in a high urgency situation. I wanted to have a better relationship with my patients. And um, I, talk, I talk about this a lot in my other videos, so check those out. But that made me realize like I wanted to be a doctor, but just not an <laughs> emergency room, uh, an emergency medicine physician and I decided to apply for a master's program. So I did that and um, I did that. By the following year, I was in the master's program at the University of South Florida. I could only say high things about that program. And if you doubt me, I actually so highly recommended it that I recommended it to one of my closest friends from high school and she went the following year. And hello, she's an OB-GYN right now. So she, and she loved that program too. So I highly recommend that program. They don't pay me for recommending them. They don't even know I talk about them. Like, but that program really like they, when I start, when I started that program and they were like in their third year of the being a program in itself. And they were like, they mimic the first two years of medical school. So they give you like a really robust training. And they really were the ones, in my opinion, who were my pre-med health advisors that really gave me great advice on how to improve my application. And um, I studied so hard. And I really think it helps me that I went to Florida. I had never been to Florida prior to that. I have no family in Florida either. So I was able to be away from like all of my distractions to really focus in. And I made some of my best friends in that program. And so I got a 4.0 in that program and really that program had like close to 200 people and they said about like 20 something people got a 4.0. That shows you how hard I worked. You do not need a 4. Point, you didn't need a 4.0 to get into medical school, but at least I was able to do that for my application. Um, I got a 4.0. And so then I also shadowed. Remember I told you guys I was limited in my experience to um to being in medicine. So I shadowed an ob gyn physician and I shadowed a neurologist. I then also was part of, I was like an ambassador or representative for the program itself for when people were interviewing, I would talk to them about it. So I was kind of like my leader, my leadership skills during that year. Then um, I grad, so it was a one-year program because I was like, I want to do a one-year program because I don't want to pay that amount, like more money. Like 
it was like about 20k for that one year so i'm super happy i was able to do that one year accelerated program master's program and do really well in it and it, i felt like it really strengthened my application they made me realize like what i needed to do like i felt very well supported i was able to get letters from people at that institute so really loved i really loved that experience and i got to be in florida and a whole new state and um try something different so then after that um, that summer, I actually missed my master's graduation because I went to Haiti for a mission trip and that experience was just awesome. And that's when I decided I was going to be doing global health and I ended up doing that for medical school, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, yeah. And then the year that I was applying, I was a family med scribe and the family med scribe is what made me realize I wanted to work outpatient and to, you know, um, will have great relationships with my pa like strong, long lasting relationships with my patients. And I applied to med school that year. What did I look so it's very important though, when you guys are applying to med school that you were honest about your what your application looks like to other um, to the admission committees. So let's talk about my MCAT scores because I didn't talk about that in my whole like thing. So I took the MCAT like the year before graduating undergrad to just like see what it was. Guys, don't do that. It's a, it's money, even though, um, don't do that. It's like a lot of studying. And if you're not prepared to even go to med school, like you're just wasting a lot of your like life and just like putting a bad score on your application. So uh, I had that bad score. Then I took the test again prior to starting my master's program and that also was not pretty so i just wanted to point out how low my second score was and it was because not only was i studying them but i was working a very busy job so one of my main tips to all students studying for the mcat is always 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 make sure that you give yourself enough time to study and then I took it after my master's program um, and it was slightly better, but I went down in verbal and it still was not competitive. And I was just like, oh my God, this is my third time. There's no way a med school is going to take me. But if you look at my score, you see that I went up two points in one area, went down, uh, stayed the same in a uh, stayed the same in the physical sciences and went down in verbal. And I just think they made verbal really difficult. And I know you guys don't even take that, like your, your test is not even that similar anymore. But I was just like, and with the support of my mom, because I'm not gonna lie, I was like really, really sad after that third try. And I was just like, I'm not even gonna apply. And my mom was like, just look at this. Like it still shows improvement, like you're gonna apply. And I think what's key though is applying to schools that actually say that they might take you. So meaning like don't apply to schools that say that if you have a bad GPA, like undergrad GPA, they're not even going to look at you. If they have MCAT score cutoffs, don't go, don't apply to that, that school. Like I apply to schools mainly, one, always apply to your home institutes, meaning like the institute of your state of residence or your of your state of residence um and i applied to programs that said they looked at a holistic they did a holistic approach at looking at students and um i ended up getting five med school interviews and uh, um uh, it was enough for me to get into med school and i got into a med school that i initially thought that I was never gonna go to because it was in rural Pennsylvania and I ended up loving my interview day and I was just like, if this is what my interview day is, like I love this school. And I even canceled one of my interviews because I was so confident that I loved my med school that I ended up going to. And the med school that I ended up going to, I loved my whole med school experience actually. So say that all to say, now, I started off as a very uncompetitive applicant. I started off feeling like I was very limited in guidance, but thankful, so thankful for the people I met along the way that strengthened my application for my mom, who was always supportive. And even though she was not in medicine, she taught herself so much about medicine so that she could support my application. So like, 
She's the one who, who found my master's program for me. She's the one who realized that there was like a list. She like learned the ins and outs of all like of the AMC website. She did all of that, especially after my third MCAT and I was like really upset. She's the one who started looking at the different med schools to see like which med school would still possibly take me. Like y'all need, if we're, and we all need someone like my mom and someone and all the people along my journey who said you should be a doctor or like who didn't let me give up who like sat down with me and told me where I could um improve myself like I'm so thankful for all those people because they helped my application be competitive enough for me to get into a medical school that I ultimately loved and ultimately got me to be where I want to to where I didn't know at the time but where I wanted to be and I'm so happy at where I'm at so here's a quick visual of how I improved. I had better grades. I had more clinical experience in the medical field. And I also somewhat improved my MCAT. And I had a lot more support in addition to my mother. I had a pre-health advisor that I felt very supported by. And I had multiple med school mentors. So I hope this is a motivating story for you guys that, you know, that wherever you're struggling with, that you can you can move past it. You can find other ways to go around it because if medicine is for you, you'll find a way and you'll be where I'm at in a few years. Like I remember when I was through the journey, it felt forever. I felt, I remember at a time thinking like the MCAT took up my whole life. I was like, do I have a life outside of taking the MCAT? Like I took it three times. So imagine how many times you have to like actively study for that. I always remember just feeling so down at certain points, especially when that third MCAT rolled in and I was not happy. I mean, there were really times I just wanted to give up this journey. I'm not going to lie to y'all. And I know a lot of y'all feel that now, especially with COVID, just disrupting all your plans. And just when you get the bad scores, like it was, I, I know it could be tough and I know it's probably even tougher now. But I'm telling you that you guys just need to find your strong network system. You need to find that power within you to just keep going. Talk to people. Reach out to people. Do your research. Study hard. Believe in yourself. And you'll get there. All right. Um, I said a lot. I'm pretty sure I left out a little bit of things about myself as well. Um, um, but if you guys have any questions... Um, you guys know I'm always there to answer. So just let me know in the comments if this was helpful. It helped motivate you, made you feel a lot better about your journey. Press that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you subscribe so you know when I am dropping these gems for y'all. Um, and even put that bell button so you know exactly when I drop those gems. Um, and thanks for watching my videos and supporting me along this way. I hope I continue to help you on your journey. You guys have a good one. Bye.